A fast food worker accused of exposing himself at the drive-thru. When you looked at the window, what did you see? I saw him mess. But a judge allows him to walk out of jail without paying a dime. How could you let him out on a P.I. bond? Where is this man at? The sickness only gets worse. Leaving the customer he flashed outraged. It's serious. It has to be addressed. This is just another example of the growing conflict surrounding PR bonds. Chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski digging deep into the shocking numbers last month. And tonight, he sits down with a woman who never expected what she witnessed that day. And when I turned my head and I saw, oh my God. I said, no, please, no. You can hear her emotions. She told police it happened here. I saw him mess. It's really gross, really creepy. He was like, wait, wait, wait. And he was doing it. And I was like, oh my God. And his eyes started rolling back in his head. A popular fast food restaurant on Colfax in Denver. And I just drove off. I got maybe two blocks. I started crying. After talking with her family, she called police. And hours later, she picked out this man in a lineup. You asked us to do this interview in silhouette. Why? Because I'm scared. I don't want him to see my face. It's like, I'm really scared. She says her fear centers on what took place after police arrested 34-year-old Redmond Ogden. I wrote the letter a judge um, stating that I didn't think it was fair that you all were letting him out on a PR bond. Denver 7 has obtained the arrest warrant affidavit. Police investigators have connected Ogden with a second indecent exposure accusation also on October 27th just five hours before the fast food incident. The court filing says it happened on this RTD bus going eastbound on Colfax. A second victim accuses Ogden of exposing himself. That victim recorded the incident on her cell phone. Describe how you responded when you got that call. He's out on a PR bond. It's sad, it's unfair. All right, I have... Redmond Ogden. This is a recording of the Zoom court hearing for Mr. Ogden. Understanding um, the nature of the offenses, um, I, I do believe still that a personal recognizance bond is appropriate. That was the public defender, a position countered by the DA's office. The frequency of these incidents is not the concern to the people that this is a recurring type of um, Behavior. The arrest warrant also cites a third incident back in March, a third victim accusing Ogden of exposing himself while in a crosswalk in front of her car. And Denver 7 also found this record from California, showing seven charges against Ogden of lewd conduct and sexual battery from August of this year. I would also note that we do have from one of the victims who expressed her alarm and the concern that she experienced when this incident did occur and that she would have hoped to see a high bond as a result of some of it. Hearing both sides, in a very telling moment, the magistrate issued her ruling. Mr. Argden, I think the characterization by the district attorney's office of this, the probable cause being uh, very alarming to people is, is exactly right. The behavior is very alarming. But I am going to give you one opportunity at a personal recognizance bond over the objection of the prosecutor. As the chief of police, when you see that this guy got a PR bond, how do you react? It's extremely frustrating. It's frustrating for this particular case, and it continues to be frustrating because I see all too many uh, examples exactly like this. A review by Denver 7 Investigates found between January 1 and the first week of September of this year, 17 cases of indecent exposure were granted a PR bond or a $1 bond, and another 12 felony cases of sexual assault or sexual contact also received a PR bond, which means the accused simply signs a document and is released from jail. No fine, not a penny required, just their word they will return to court. Last month, Denver 7 dug deep into the PR bond numbers. Our review found nearly 3,700 accused criminals facing nearly 8,000 felony charges were granted PR bonds during the first nine months of this year. And our review found nearly a third of those accused criminals given PR bonds failed to appear in court for a future hearing. 
How did you react to the numbers we uncovered? The numbers are shocking and it uh, reveals a significant challenge that we face and we have to do something about it as a criminal justice system. A call for action supported by the woman who called Denver 7, responding to our reports, wanting to share her story. What's this say about our legal system right now? The legal system, I thought they were to serve and to protect. So they're serving, but they're not protecting. We did reach out to Wendy's. Our request for an interview was declined, but they did disclose they cooperated with law enforcement and Mr. Ogden no longer works for Wendy's. The magistrate did tell Mr. Ogden that if he fails to remain law abiding or fails to follow his bond in any way, he's not likely to get another PR bond. We will continue to follow this case and this process. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski.